The food police are coming. They're upset that you're not eating right. They want an extra tax on bad food. It's a Twinkie tax, they call it. You're choosing bad food because it's cheap. So I'm going to double the price on that double cheeseburger. But I don't want to charge him double for the double. And I don't want to pay double for the double. That's because you're evil and you're stupid. The idea to tax certain foods um, is, is undemocratic to begin with. Um, you eat what you like and let me eat what I like. The higher tax will steer you to these healthy foods. Won't that be great? The U.S. Department of Agriculture has estimated that in order to get people to consume more leafy green vegetables, we would basically have to pay people to eat them. How many of, uh, of you have heard of Mimi Roth? One of the most interesting things I found on this was when I go to conferences of obesity researchers. Everyone is a thin white person. It's not just a personal choice. The rest of us pick up the tab. The next generation's fat. We see that obesity compromises educational possibilities. Roth is a crusader against fat and president of a group called National Action Against Obesity. So, national action? We need national action? Well, we've got a national price tag. We're in the throes of a national obesity bailout. The annual price tag is $147 billion annually, expected to go up to $344 billion annually in the coming years. Well, we're refusing to eat properly and take care of our bodies. So, we either need to make it a law, which I think is the last resort, or we need to do it ourselves. We're refusing to do it ourselves, and we're passing that bill onto our neighbors. That, to me, is unfair. I Either hold people accountable, make them pay for it, uh, uh, reorganize and recategorize many illnesses as elective. If it's a result of an elective behavior, pay out of pocket. And if we are free, refuse to hold people accountable, then you have to have government intervention. In the 1990s, the Food and Drug Administration decided it was time to help us slim down. So they ordered food manufacturers to adopt a standardized nutrition label that includes recommended servings of protein, carbohydrates, and fat. FDA Commissioner David Kessler said it was the most important battle for public health he'd ever waged. Stories in the media were full of happy predictions about how much smarter Americans were going to eat thanks to all that good government advice. And since then... John Banzeff is a law professor at George Washington University, and he's okay with the term food police. Because well, actually, no, John. You and I know it's a deceptive term because nothing I've done, my legal colleagues and I, has been trying to get, prevent any adult from eating as much as they want. What have we done? We've used legal action now to get calorie disclosures here in New York, where you enjoy it. Soon it's going to go national. We now have studies showing that, yes, it does help people reduce their calorie intake. You think it's wrong? Yes, because it You costs don't think them. eating fast food frequently can lead to obesity? Of Every study in the world. That's what it says. That. Look at ah. But we don't put warnings, John, up there for the best and brightest like you. Maybe Everybody like, knows. No, that. no, 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 no. Okay, sure. You and I know high calorie food when we see it. But when I've discussed the merits of supersize me with my friends and associates, I've noticed a curious pattern. Almost everyone who really likes that movie shares a common and dearly held belief. We, they don't. We put the warnings up for people who may not know about it, may be immature, may be forgetful. I have here a double quarter pounder with cheese, a large right. order of fries, and a large Coke. Right. Now, is that a high calorie meal or a low calorie meal? Definitely, I'd say a high calorie meal. I would say that's a hell of a lot. A hell of Calories. a lot. Very high. Very high. Very high. I believe, honest, is. 
a high calorie. High calorie. I know it's, I know it's a high calorie. <laughs> Which one of these has more calories? The carrots or the french fries? The french fries. The french fries. Give me a rough guess. How many calories here? I would say maybe in both carrots. Just in the carrots, yeah. The um, combined. Uh, Large order of carrots. I would say maybe 25 calories. Okay. How many calories in there? I'd say maybe 500. That's a medium calorie meal. Medium calorie meal. Give me a rough guess, whole thing. How many calories? 3,500. Is 3,500 medium to you? They are reducing the amount of calories in their offerings, and this allows them to make responsible choices. You want to talk about personal responsibility, you've got to give people information. Fat, hey, fat, hey, yeah. I'm going to start thinking smarter. So Reason TV editor Nick Gillespie named Mayor Bloomberg its nanny of the year because of his rules. Uh, your argument is similar to Eric Oliver's. Weight is not a crisis, but mostly an excuse for politicians to boss people around. That's absolutely, uh, I think that's undeniably true. And you heard it from all of your guests today. They said that poor people, fat people, other classes of people make bad decisions uh, defined as I know the good decisions and if people aren't following my decision-making process then we need to nudge them we need to control them we need to regulate nudge them. them but it's true that many of those people make poor decisions yeah wait wait I actually take issue with that and and by the way the councilwoman who says I'm gonna spur development by banning certain types of development that's like censors who say you know what I'm not censoring this book I'm just making sure it's not available to anybody it's <laughs> it's Orwellian it's it's just ridiculous some of the things you're saying aren't scientific there based. is not an obesity epidemic just as really? political science yeah you know define an epidemic the, first off by the way an epidemic an epidemic is a contagious disease yes and there okay is what's the pathogen the what's the pathogen see please well, I, that is a good question what's contagious about this the studies show that obesity works and grows among social networks, within marriage, within friend circles, and it grows in that way. So it's been labeled as socially contagious. And, and I don't want to get into a debate, is it really contagious? Is it really an epidemic? The reality is it's a health crisis. It's the most pressing health crisis of our time. It shouldn't be a first lady project. It should be handled with the care and the intellect that swine flu and other things are handled. But Mimi, why? No, I've got the, got the Constitution here. It doesn't say anything You're about right. it's your job to manage people's health. No, and I agree. Let's look at Medicare and Medicaid. Are, are as long as other people are paying the price, you force all of us to give an opinion on how you live your no, life. Okay, then the solution to this crisis, then, is getting rid of socialized medicine. Yeah. I'm for that. Okay, and then it's